All right. I want to summarize a few things that I was reminded of with regard to Postgres. I'm actually currently working on a thing called Katesapp dash Postgres SQL dash backup. It will be just a cron job. It's one of the smallest, simplest uh, Kubernetes applications that you could create. Um, but I hit a number of blockers uh, along the way and mistakes that I want to tell you about that relate to me thinking about all of this stuff like somebody from 2001 when I first learned Postgres and put everything out there. Um, the, the, I got the part where you make a Postgres server uh, in a Docker container correct. And for that, I actually wrote a script um, just in a tools directory here called start, start Postgres container. Uh, you know, chat GPT did remind me how to use Podman. I decided to use Podman versus Docker. And, um, that, you know, I'm exposing port 5432, which allows it to be seen on a local machine, um, or anything, you know, any other container that can talk to that local machine, you need to expose those ports out. I remember I put the environment variables in the env file, which are super secret. Uh, this is a really common container thing that I don't necessarily like, but I do it anyway. Postgres user, my, my, um, uh, my password, I got to shut that up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to shut that up. Which, which one was it? SC. Oh, I'll do that next time. So anyway, I put these, these passwords in there. Um, so they would be set up during the initialization of the database. And then, and then I ran the, the, the thing that started the container. Okay, so there's no Kubernetes involved yet. Uh, this is just containers so I can write the test script to run the PG dump and, and, and put some sample data in there and practice doing the dump of the data. Um, you could just run, you know, the PG dump command and do the we do a one line and put it in a bash script. But, you know, for right now I'm trying to kind of flesh it out. Um, a volume mounted a local data directory um, so that this other system can see it and when I'm running uh, commands that will load data from that directory, I can start to, I haven't done any of that yet. And then uh, where are the images and I'm pulling it down from Docker Hub, which I hate, but because it doesn't exist anywhere else. Um, so so that, that got me the database running, but then the problem started. Um, how do you access your database, right? And they, these are extremely newbie problems that I had because I've been writing Go code and doing all kinds of other things at work. I haven't been doing any of this. I haven't touched Postgres in years. So the first thing I did wrong was I, even though I'm running in a VM, I was like, Oh, I need PSQL. So I'll just sudo apt install, you know, Postgres, right? No wrong. It's because, because why? Number one, I had to add an app repository to get the latest version of Postgres, uh, to get the PSQL and I want to get PG dump so I can do the dump and you can still see the error here on top of my screen. PG dump version 14 doesn't match version 16. So that's one of many errors that could be avoided by setting up a test container client, client container to access the other container. You could probably combine them, but I think containing it, that's the solution. If you wanted to jump ahead, that's the answer. And I'm going to start doing that tomorrow and I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a status update video on that. So the, what, what I'm getting at is that when in the old days, which, you know, I'm old, um, you know, you would set up a server and you put a version on there and you, of course, you're going to use package management because it's easier, but Red Hat and Post and Ubuntu even are both, you know, notoriously bad at keeping really, you know, back, back, back level versions. Now I could fix this. I actually need to back up and test 16.4. That's the one we're using in, 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 in our Harbor registry. So that's the one that I want to do. That's the one I want to back up, but I can't do it if I'm using the app package managers or I'm using the OS package managers. And why would you, right? Um, you need to be able to get the one that matches the one you want, which means you're going to need to install Postgres in a different way. So by doing this, uh, I did a whole bunch of things and, and not to mention the fact that I had a leftover PG, um, database, uh, PG database environment variable in my bash RC from when I was doing a co-working database for a long time ago, because it is nice to have, you know, the most, the, the localized version of it. So you can use the PSQL command and then all that other stuff gets populated for you. So you can just do that. Right. So I finally got the PSQL command to work. I got the PG dump to work and everything. Uh, so that, you know, I can just do PSQL like this and I get a database. Uh, that's by, you know, setting up a PG pass and then setting the environment variables correctly and all that stuff that you, we would do in 2000. Um, but, but the problem is as soon as I got that done and I started doing the thing I wanted to do, uh, which was just PG dump, um, 
you know, I was like, which version is this even? And it's like, oh no, you can't use it. So, um, you can bear this. Yeah, it's the same error that before. The point of it is that ha had I done, had I created a client container from the beginning, which I was going to do, but I thought, oh, that's going to be too much hassle. If I created a client container, uh, and a Docker file for that or something and, and just pulled down like, I don't know, like a, like a Debian container or a, even God, it doesn't even have to be that. It could be anything, anything that can support, uh, the installation of Postgres. I could even probably, um, do well, now that I think about it, I could probably do all of this on the actual container itself. That's probably what I'm going to try. I've been trying to decide whether I need two containers to write this or not. This is all just during the test phase of it before we even turn it into a uh because we have to be able to test you know the backing of the database which is super easy it's just one command but we still want to test i still want to test it right and i want to test it in a cron job and put it in minikube and do all those things and for that we have to have an image um that contains um this stuff um and you know i'm starting to think now that i can probably just pull in the postgres uh the Postgres uh, container image as into the Kubernetes uh, pod in order to do this cron job. Um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So what I wanted to say is if, if you are inclined and most of you probably aren't cause you're younger than me, but if you're, if you're inclined to try to get your virtual machine uh, so that it has the same client and everything that it needs to talk to your database, which is using the latest uh, container image, good, good chance it's not going to match. And it should have been really obvious to me, and it wasn't. So I'm just putting it out there so that you can, you can know that uh, when you're going to get it, when you're going to try this. Uh, my current strategy going forward is going to be to just use the Postgres image. Just use the Postgres image as is. I, I'll have to see if it has everything in it. It's obviously got PG dump and everything in there. So all I need to do at that point is mount a volume and have some data. Put the data in there, dump it, and, and compare the two sets of data. Um, and in order for me to use the, the, the PSQL command, I will have to exec into it. I'll have to go into the, into the database. I'll have to exec from the command line, um, or I'll have to go into the, the container and do stuff. And one of the reasons I don't like that is because I lose all of my fancy command line stuff because I'm in just you know, a really bare bones Debian system or something. And there are ways around that. Uh, I've made a workspace container in the past, um, to get around that but it's really big and bloated it gets bigger as you go because you want to put all these things in there so it's like so uh, there is something of a middle ground there and i'm going to try to shoot for and that is running just running one liner of docker commands against the running container um but that's not how containers work right they spin up a container in order to run uh in order to execute a thing and then they go away so uh if this is the one that's containing the database, uh, I kind of want it to be around when they keep the data in it when I'm doing the thing. So, um, number of things I still have to look into there and learn about. So, uh, that's all.